Hey everybody, it's Brock, and today you get to see my face. I wanted to go through a water change step by step as I tend to be a visual learner, and if I can watch someone do it once, I pretty much got it from then on. Plus, this could teach you some tips and tricks you aren't doing already, and some new things you could try out on your tank to keep it cleaner. So today we're doing all about a water change with Brock. Now I've let this tank sit for about two months now, so I've got some great algae growing in order to teach y'all how to take care of it. We got some hair algae growing, we got some cyano, just a bunch of good things that y'all probably ran into so that I can show y'all how you can easily take care of it. Starting right up, first thing I like to do is prepare the room. Get your towels, your stool, buckets, siphon, any chemicals you'll dose that you'll need to complete this water change. A trick we used to do at the fish store is putting down a tarp first and then towels on top. In case you had a big spill and your towels were soaked, you still had that tarp as a safeguard for your carpet or hardwood. Second thing I like to do is I will actually feed my fish and coral if needed. This go ahead and just get them knocked out, get them full bellies before starting the water change. And this also just guarantees you a cleanup from the leftover food and the leftover coral food that sprayed around. You know, those liquid foods that you squirt in there or pellets that you drop on top of them. They aren't going to eat all of it, so a lot of it is still floating around the tank. So it's good to just dirty it up right before you do a good water change. What I'm feeding them right now is just a mixture of mysis and krill frozen cubes. Those krill a little bit bigger for my puffer to eat. That way he can chew them up real good and keep those teeth wear down. And then that mice they just love it. The third thing, I like to just inspect your tank. Get an idea of what needs cleaning and if you need to make any changes inside, whether it's rock structure, coral placement, you know, cleaning algae off. You got some new hardware to add to the tank. Currently in mine, I want to get rid of this cyano growing in the front of the tank. I want to clean this hair algae off my power heads. And I want to siphon the sand because it gets real dirty up under there. I don't need to move or add anything, but this is a perfect time if needed. My usual fourth step is shutting down all pumps, lights, and hardware, removing the top, and getting started right into it. But I'm going to leave my lights on for the video so y'all can get a clear view of what I'm doing. So number five is cleaning the glass. I usually let my back glass and both the left and right side get covered in coralline algae as it's good for my cleanup crew to feed on. You can see from the side it kind of has this hazy green color on it. Once you get that mag flow across it, it'll look clear as day. You can even see a little snail trail going right here. I've always been a big fan of these mag float magnets, especially with the blade on them now. So let's get this front glass cleaned. Now with these mag floats that do have the blade on them, you definitely want to be careful when getting close to that silicone on the corners of your tank. You definitely don't want to be scraping that because it's going to really mess up your seal on the tank and could cause a leak. So be careful just to stay away from those black lines that run down and you'll do really fine. Another thing is rocks can get stuck in between the magnet on the inside and running that across the glass can easily cause scratches so make sure each time you do use that mag float just take it off let it float around make sure there ain't nothing on the inside of the magnet before actually running that across your tank now it's time to siphon the water out now i want to go in depth on this siphon too because i feel like i haven't really explained it that much to y'all so i want to make sure y'all really understand how these work because at the beginning when i was using them they gave me the worst time trying to get that gravity fed to bring the water down so what we have is we have the tube end and we got the siphon in so we're dropping the tube in into the bucket of course and then the siphon is going to be completely submerged into the water it's going to fill completely up and then what you're going to want to do is pull that tube up with all the water in it and what you'll see is that tube will start to empty the water it'll go down the tube and then gravity will do its magic now, once it gets about halfway in the tube, you want to drop it back down so that you're continuing that flow of water. What you saw I did is I didn't bring it back down quick enough and I had to bring it back up again so that gravity did its magic. Now, once you got that continuous flow, you're good to go. You can do your sand sifting. The other way I like to use is taking the siphon off and just using the tube and you can put that tube down in your water. The other end is still in the bucket. And then basically what you have to do is a self-siphon 
and you just suck a little bit of air through the tube and the water starts to come down. Now you want to be quick with this because in my time of doing it, I've sucked a lot of salt water and you definitely don't want to run into that. This just gives you a greater suction for things like taking care of hair algae on rocks and sucking up cyano throughout the tank. Anything you need to just have a good suction going through, this will really take care of it for you. With us doing a chemi-clean dose, in order to get rid of the algae, I'm going to remove the siphon and just use the tube in order to create a greater suction to remove the layer of cyano out. ChemiClean will not remove all of this by itself, so it normally needs some help from you, but the ChemiClean is a great prevention after it's dosed. Siphoning the sand is an easy trick to learn and leaves your sand bed looking brand new. I like to suck the sand as high as I can and then dropping it back down, repeating this until the water is clear and all that waste has been sucked out. So if you see while I'm doing it, as that sand comes up, what comes up even faster is just that brown crud that's deep in the sand from, you know, your fish and just leftover food that sits down there. I try to keep going up and down with it until there's clear water running up. At this point, I like to clean my hardware in buckets of the discarded water. Now, I accidentally poured my water out not thinking about it, but usually once I get that discarded water, I'll just use my power heads and my siphon cup and just drop them in there and go to town with a little toothbrush. But for this certain case, we're going to the sink with it. Now, make sure you're using a toothbrush, not your personal toothbrush. Make sure you have one just specific for the fish tank because these things can get really nasty. You also could use a pipe cleaner for tighter spaces to get very clean on your power heads and any kind of pumps that are intaking all day long. Leaving algae on a power head, it will constantly push that around the tank for new spots to grow and it also decreases the power of the suction in your pumps and also the power of the water pushing out to create those waves by your power heads. And another thing I always like to recommend is cleaning your glass lids. You know, those glass lids pile up salt creep on top of them and can also grow algae and, you know, greens, blacks, browns, all different kinds of colors. So it's good to try to scratch that off, you know, at least every couple of months, every few water changes. Because if that stuff starts stacking up too high, then your LED lights, your T5s, whatever's on top is actually not getting to your corals and into the tank as strong as they should be so you start waiting too long and you end up having corals shrinking up and you're trying to figure out why and it most of the time is because these lights aren't using their full power that they normally can going through a clean glass lid so make sure you clean those off every once in a while now we're going to start pouring the water back in and topping off any water that has evaporated the previous month so if you take 10 gallons out and you put 10 salt back in, please do not top off that salt water with more salt water. This is gonna cause your salinity to spike. So just as, for example, your water is sitting at 1.023 right now before your water change. And then over the month it has evaporated and now your salinity is probably at 2.5. If you do that water change and you take 10 out and put 10 back in, it's gonna put you back at that two five point. And so what you'll wanna do is pour reverse osmosis fresh water into the tank, filling it to back to its top spot. And this will allow it to get back to that two three that you're wanting to hit. I've seen too many people do water changes on their tank and they see it's not to that black spot, that black line in their tank and they think, oh, just pour some more salt water in it. And then it just skyrockets their salinity levels. Now, I also want to say, whenever you are pouring this water in, 
don't just dunk this mess right on top of your rocks and your corals and everything because those corals really don't like to just have brand new salt water or if it's top off or it's straight on top of them it can also hurt them so a big thing about it is just start pouring that water and cup your hand where it's pouring out that way it splashes all directions and you're not having just a beat down of water on your corals and it'll really help out so just cup that water help it disperse along the tank without it just diving down and hitting your sand and hitting your corals too hard and then lastly you want to plug everything back in turn your pumps on plug your lights back up and make sure everything's looking okay now we do have some additional steps this time because we are dosing ChemiClean. you can see that as I'm pouring the dose through the water bottle into the tank, that's just pouring that ChemiClean all around to take care of that cyano so I don't have to deal with it in the future months. Now, I do have a really in-depth video of ChemiClean and dosing and trying to take care of cyanoalgae. So if you need to watch that video, go check it out. It's in my All About Other Stuff playlist. I'm also going to put a link to it in the description if you want to check that out if you've been having some problems with it. I go really in-depth of step by, step by step on how to take care of it. Set your protein skimmer up a little higher than you're normally used to because sometimes whenever you turn all those pumps back on, it'll skim higher than what it was before. So raise it up a little bit so you don't occur in a over spill of water coming out of that cup. Also, when doing a water change, this is a great time to replace your filter media in your sump, your canister filter, or hang on the back filters, whatever you're using. You definitely want to have some clean filters whenever that good, clean water goes in because if you're just putting back the dirty filters they're just going to put more waste in the tank and whenever you do a water change you know you end up having to do one again sooner than later now another thing i did want to touch on is if you do have corals at the very top of your tank like mushrooms and anemones and things that can be out of the water for a little while if you do have to drop your water levels below them just make sure you're splashing them periodically with salt water on top of them That'll keep them all hydrated while you're doing your work around the tank with these mushrooms. I just like to splash them with some water. Now, don't fret whenever you turn everything back on. Everything's still going to be kind of in shock. Your corals are going to be shrunk up. You might have a little bit of debris floating around the tank just from mixing up the sand, getting in there and just cleaning algae off of everything. Also, your fish are going to be pretty shy and coming out. They might be staying in the back. You might have gobies that don't come out until the next morning. All of that's normal. Don't fret. Just be patient with them. They'll be out the next day in your pretty tank with all the pretty water in it. Like you can see in mine, there's tons of bubbles going on. That's just the Kimmy Clean doing its thing. I just wanted to thank you all for all coming out. I hope you all had a good time. I sure did. I hope you all learned some new tricks and tips that you all can use in your future water changes. Thank you all for a wonderful 2021 year. It has been a blast getting to know each and every one of y'all and having just a blast in the fish community we have built. I hope y'all all have a wonderful holiday season with you and your family and friends, and I will see y'all later. Hey everybody, it's Brock and today's video is sponsored by Dream Team Forever. Make sure to check out our website as we just released the first ever All About Tees that feature 30 fish and inverts from the series. Click the link in the description to get some for you and your family.